Welcome back, everyone, to the Natty 19 Podcast. I'm Jonathan Marshall, and we are back once again to bring the D&D to you, Natty 19 style. By the time this episode launches, it'll be a whole new year. Out with the old and in with the new, as they say. Before we re-enter Chult, I wanted to take a moment to share in a toast. Here, here. Hey, yo. Woo. <laughs> that was an aggressive one. <laughs> <laughs> Smash. <laughs> a year of Natty 19. Yeah, one guys. Year. Good year. Good start. Good beginning. Good crew. Most of all, Debatable. great, great community. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. And we hope for at least a whole nother year. <laughs> <laughs> real pain to my champagne to my real friends and real pain to my sham friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. What, what is that from again? This is delicious. 25th hour? That's Is that it? With uh Ed Norton? I've never seen is it. it. That one? But I'll I watch anything so. with Ed Norton in it. It's a good it. one. It's a good one. It's got the other guy there. Uh, yeah. This actually isn't as bubbly as I would normally. Well, that's cuz it didn't even <laughs> pop. Did you hear it? It was like Huh. Philip Someone Seymour Hoffman. Like, was it a pre somebody pre popping on us? What's that? Pre-popping? Philip Seymour Hoffman thing too. <laughs> oh, is he in that one? Yeah, he's I the friend that's a teacher. Yeah. Right? Oh right. <laughs> you guys are killing our one year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, one year Ed Norton. Anniversary. IMDB Ed real Norton quick. should be here. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Can you we get an IMDB make... check on that real quick? <laughs> 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 All right. You know what? Let's play some D&D. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have surprises. Oh, shit, son. (laughs) (laughs) We called her out. Surprises, huh? Finally time. She's reaching down, grabbing. What is it? Oh, Oh shit. What are these? What do we got? (laughs) They are dice bags. Oh, that's awesome. They look like they hold dragon eggs. I want black. We gotta roll on. We gotta roll on first color pick here. Oh, (laughs) what color you want? It's already in my hands. I'll take last pick. I don't care. No, you don't get. They're all cool colors. Green. Green. Yeah. Unless you wanted black. What color you want? Ooh, um, kind of got dragon scales. On I'll them. go with the gray. Yeah, it looks like they That's got dragon. Awesome, thank you. Looks like they hold dragon eggs. And Wesson the gray. Now is your we're sending you one. Nice, K-way? thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna address him? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. For we're radio? sending you one, Kway. We asked for your address so we could send it to you. Awesome. Yeah, what's your address, Kway? <laughs> so why don't we go into this? Why don't we go into these dice bags real quick? What are we looking at here? These are cro- crocheted. Yeah, and they're with dragon scales on them, so they look like little dragon eggs. And they fit they a look- beer in them. Yeah, perfectly. they're like a koozie, oh, aren't wow, they? Wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christie's creation. She slaved away for hours to see them fucking defiled by fucking beer bottles and beer cans. <laughs> you gotta undo the string. <laughs> undo it. There you go. Now you can pull the top. Yeah. No, it's already. It was already. It was right. loose. It was loose. Well, thank you. Yeah. It was very thoughtful and nice. Plus three AC for the beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours did you put into these? Three per three, three per, per, per. Yeah. Wow. Two per. Good two. lord. First two. ones felt like it took a little. Yeah, while. the first once you got like less per bag right. as you got to know the pattern. Uh, you know. I think they're awesome. I think that, you know, yeah. handmade fucking trinket. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> it's incredible. All right. We're going to have to add the rest of those details for these dice bags. And hopefully we can flesh out the details on how you guys can get your hands on them. They are pretty awesome. We're going to have some picks on our Facebook page and well, wherever else we can put picks. But tonight is the night. <laughs> episode 52 of the Natty 19, 50, episode 50 (laughs) fucking three of the Natty 19. One year in the books. Yeah. (laughs) Hit the fucking music. Let's play some fucking D&D. Ow.
Now, I'm wondering, a full year later, we haven't had any deaths. It's, a, it's actually, I feel like we've been kicking ass. I feel like you guys have been kicking some Lately, ass. Lately, yeah. And doing some, doing some stuff. I mean, Air May killed two monkeys with one blow. <laughs> <laughs> we had one close call. That the the Cladiator fight. Cladiator yeah. That fight. was close. That was really close. We might have had another one that in was, the early days. That was too. close by so many like so many people could have died and then I don't know, there was a lot going on we there. Fled, we fled that one, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, run? we did. Yeah. We did. No. Yeah. No. This might have been our only flea. It's because I wasn't there to protect only you. Flea. It is, it's true. Zavril Pretty wasn't much. there. Yeah. And if we knew the rules, I think somebody would have died in yeah, that fight. Yeah, I, I actually I think it was. I think uh, it was what we rules fl- did we bet? It was the unconscious. It was fallen to zero. You remain unconscious even if you yeah. pass your death saves. You remain unconscious for upwards to ten because minutes. Because Orvex woke up and yeah. sooner Cappy. than he should have. Right. So what would have happened would have been uh, Cappy would have had to make more death, death saves, saves right. which could have killed you. Yeah. Let's roll the die right now. See uh, that's what, what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> no, not do that. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. That's not funny. Just roll it and we won't tell anybody on the air. We'll just know for ourselves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a motherfucking 11. Whoa. Nice. Wait. That's passes. 11 the passes. Pass. All right. Fair enough. One through I thought it was fails. It wasn't 12. It is the <laughs> lowest <laughs> number. <laughs> it is the lowest number I could have rolled and still passed. 11 nice. is the lowest number. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, that's just a sign from Timora that. All Cappy would have been be. white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would have been all right. Taimora is on our side. Yes, she is. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, that champagne's going straight to our head. Uh, that was a good one. So you've had, we've had a week. You guys, we went last episode was a little back and forth. Uh, that that riddle. You guys nailed it, though. That was good. There was a little bit of uh, tension brewing. Been a lot, a lot of that lately. Been a lot of tension. Yeah. What's going on with that? You know, sleeping in the same dungeons, <laughs> close to each other. You yeah. know what? Oddly same enough, company. I can't help but think that it's uh, the humidity falls a lot on Irume because her stakes have what's raised the most. Hmm. I was thinking Quincy has a hair up his ass about uh, <laughs> Copernicus's. <laughs> goals uh, not to mention that your encounter with the hag finger. oh yeah he's stressing you out <laughs> Be- yeah. better yeah. than a drow finger <laughs> yeah and we've got wesson <laughs> and wesson's not doing good he's yeah you know his, his health is declining rapidly and uh <clears throat> just doesn't have the same uh same tolerance anymore you know for the fight for the journey mm. and orvex i mean i don't know Nobody give a fuck about Orvex. Ain't <laughs> nobody care about Orvex. I mean, Riga, he's kind of like getting, you know, Riga's kind of holding on, you know, but he's getting bored, clearly, you know? Like, he, he's cut from a different cloth. He came here with a purpose, and that purpose isn't being fulfilled. Uh, but he does understand the importance, and, yeah, I mean, I think all around it's just not, Something isn't clicking, you know. Which is funny because I think in in another sense, like Quincy's really feeling confident, a lot more confident now. You know, we're getting battle veterans. We're getting battle yeah. experience. I actually thought that last fight or last week where you in battle, I was thinking that you've changed a lot, you know, from when we first walked in there and you were hesitant to even pull out your rapier. Oh, yeah. Now he just whips it right out. <laughs> oh, the Ankylosaurus Ooh, fight. I wish we had time to go into the Ankylosaurus fight a little bit. We can make time. Kind of like the old sitcoms when they'd have those uh, <laughs> montage I hated episodes. Those. <laughs> I, hated I don't know. Them. <laughs> I don't know how to write Ankylosaurus. So I'm only top ten Ankyl- greatest oh, moments from Ankylosaurus. <laughs> be the top nineteen moments. Oh, oh. gimmicky! I like it. <laughs> Get a vine going. All right. Well, you guys, you, you've been pushing the short rests. 
Oh, <laughs> what'd you just whisper? I didn't hear it. Assassin. He said, get a vine going. And I said, assassin vine. Ah, right. old, hey, let's not bring days. that one up. Again. Yeah, that was <laughs> April's uh, moment there. Near death. That'll be in the top 19 moments. My oh. favorite moment was the Tyrannosaurus, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we shouldn't even Go play tonight. We should, we should just talk about uh, all our great times we had over the We've year. We only had one bottle of champagne. I like episode <laughs> eight. There's five of us. <laughs> episode eight is still my favorite. We're gonna which which one that was it? Uh, when we're in the tent and the dinosaurs That's outside. what I just what? said. Yeah, that's, that's still the your one? favorite? Five. Yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. I'm what like, was, <laughs> oh, what was the name of that episode? Does anyone remember? Ooh, blah, no. The next one was Sturge Burst, because that was number nine. I know. Camping's I got intense. it. I got it. What? I, I don't Anybody remember. remember? What is it? <laughs> Tell it's us. It's not Blood in the Water. No, it's The Quiet Star. and the Dead. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, because it's like the main. What a great song. title. Ah. I don't know. My favorite episode so far was still when we uh, reenacted the past. Oh, oh, Camp Nat- Righteous. Oh, Camp yeah. Righteous. That was a good okay. one. Yeah, that was a great right, episode. We can do this real quick. Everyone's f- favorite. So, yeah. Cappy oh, yeah, and Quincy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We this were on uh, number... We were episode, episode eight. eight. Yeah. You got episode 19. Weston, what was your favorite episode? <laughs> so, I haven't been a part of too many, but so far, I'd say the, the Halloween episode was awesome. I mean, yeah, I, I really uh, enjoyed yeah. that one. The I witch. Like, you I know, the really old really hag with the finger. Too. I mean that was uh, that was pretty creative and and I had a lot of fun. Nice, the hag finger. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I was yeah, everyone's gonna, looking at me. I w- no, no, we were looking. At, <laughs> we were all looking no, at your I'm just kidding. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I was gonna go with the Halloween, but actually. Uh, the cl- me, 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 me. <laughs> so, Son of a bitch. Jonathan, what was your favorite episode? <laughs> Irma. The gladiator fight. Good. That oh. was a, that I was know a really it good was one. just uh, tension. Yeah. Everything was awesome about that. The tension was there. That was like four and a half episodes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So the one where I think that you. Oh, fuck. The one that ends with Irma outside with Quincy. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That was the one after Blood and Sand, right? Do we remember the name of that episode? Oh, it sucks. Okay. (laughs) No, I don't. So it might be two episodes, but the section is I like when Irma's outside with Quincy and she cries and, and Quincy's alive and then she goes back in and Copernicus gets up and yes. she just tells him to get the spear. She's yeah. wiping the tears from her under her glasses. It was like after just, the fight. Yeah. yeah, and she tells him to pick up the spear. That was just a great... It's been an emotional journey. Great fucking moment. Yep. No one's asking me, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite episode, I go to Confessions in the Jungle. Episode six? Episode six, yeah, I believe. Yeah, when Irame hugs Zimwabi. Yeah, there, a lot of good oh. stuff came out. Irame's vision of her, her origin story there with the chalice that comes out. Zimwabi tells his story. Uh, I love listening to it. I Every now and again, I go back and listen to it just to get a refresher. Uh, but, yeah, I got to say... Uh, I'm, so, Great episodes, man. Yeah, yeah we're, we're doing a good job. St- <laughs> it sounds like we started off hot. We got really cold for like 25 <laughs> episodes, and then we got hot again. <laughs> so. I don't know. Even the beginning, the moment when uh, we're messing with the sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. The beginning was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Even in the middle. Let's talk about Anit for a little bit. That was a lot of fun yeah. there. The, the we gentle thought mist. Irame was leaving, and Anit was moving in. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great moment. Dude, Cappy got rid of Anit. Yeah, I feel like that came out of nowhere. I like building the staff, Quincy building the staff. Yeah, like, oh, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, that was like like a four story plot line. Yeah, that went on. <laughs> that took time. We had a meet up. Oh, we met the we met uh from Camp Righteous. Camp one Righteous, of the, one of the dickheads. There. Yeah, Mott and Dern. Derns. and Derns. It was Derns, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, that was a good episode too. I liked it. A yeah, he of, broke down. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the guilt was getting to him. We saw the human side of Derns. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. We have an episode to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the camera just like shakily, quickly 
scans back into <laughs> Omu. Omu. Where we're camping. Yeah, so you guys had some a, a, a run of some short rests. The day is wearing on you. Um, I know some of you are out of hit die to spend. Uh, if you could push another short rest, but I'm going to take a constitution save and throw. Uh, if On a failed save, you'll get a, a, your first level of exhaustion. Up to you guys. Would I have or to? Or you could take, there's nearby abandoned buildings. And you could take a long rest. Less rest. Would I have to, given that I only need half <laughs> well <time> said. <laughs> you would need four hours of trance to be rested. Short rests are only one hour. I think I think the general consensus is that we're leaning toward a long rest. All right. I know some of us, you know, like Riga. Riga, if you've got better things to do, then go do them. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even involved in the last fight. He was too busy listening to the monkeys. Exactly. I couldn't hear a damn thing with all these monkeys screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you all can even concentrate on riddles and such. <laughs> <laughs> and my uh, flask is empty. However, I told him would be I would hang around at least until he is done. Well, I do not have a third level spell slot to cast the Leoman's tiny hut. I'm just too fatigued to cast the spell for this rest, so perhaps we should set Long a watch. Rest. Well, I will say while you are all I in there, I have found a nice place where we can rest, right across the way here. All right. Yeah. In the Coliseum? <laughs> uh, no, just across the street from the Coliseum. Oh. Would it still be wise to set watch? It's a shame I was born And it is stage. not a Coliseum, it is an amphitheater. <laughs> Are you some sort of archaeologist? No, I think not. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. It is an just, amphitheater. <laughs> Thank you, just young Quinn. Out of curiosity, do we still hear loud noises coming from there? <laughs> Did you hear loud noises coming from loud there? Loud noises. Mr. Dontrak has been hearing loud noises ever <laughs> since his return from the Yuanti capture. This is true. <laughs> yes, I heard loud noises coming from there. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, it could have been, but I was under the impression because I don't remember. I thought that everything was silent as you were approaching the amphitheater. Mm. I thought even the insects were quiet, but I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until we were yeah the monkeys didn't start making noise until we approached the shrine, and it was eerily quiet yes. as we traveled north. You remember that, Wesson, when we walked by the amphitheater? I do, but unfortunately I was too busy coughing up blood. Oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> I had a niece once that was coughing up blood. Jesus. She didn't make it through the night. No, oh, that was my mother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> niece, mother, right. <laughs> Quincy, what does the uh, Song of Rest do? The Song of Rest is actually for when we take a short rest. And it gives you bonus hit points on top of your hit die. So nothing for the long rest. Nothing for the long rest. All right. I rest my case. <laughs> <All right>. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Don't do that, really. All right. So camping out, I mean, you guys, you got a lot done on Hammer. Between Hammer 17 and 18, you guys pushed through. Hammer 17 Hammer was a long day on its own. And then you just banged out another shrine to cap it off. Starting out, well, you had Cappy's birthday. Happy birthday, Cappy. And then we already did that. Cappy birthday. We, it's already I know, passed. it's the end of the night. You, you know, you say the last one. Okay, fair. I like that. I'm feeling it. <laughs> 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 I hope it was a good birthday for Cappy you. Happy birthday, Happy. <laughs> I'm uh, that was speechless. Christy, right? uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It would appear we got you a fourth puzzle cube for your birthday, Copernicus. Orvax, oh, you're always so witty and kind. Uh, yes, I tried to be. And you are always a good friend as well, uh, Copernicus. I would like to thank you, Oravex, for showing me the showing me the ropes, if you will, 
when it comes to you know the he gestures with his like he's <laughs> mocking battle with the rapier or something uh, yes. showing me the vital organs exploiting an enemy's weakness and using your compatriots as uh, distractions yes of course and uh, yes absolutely you are most welcome young Quincy uh, and also I um, helping you with the old Omoan transcriptions is uh, it's no no bother really <laughs> <laughs> Irma's looking at her like she wants to choke him. <laughs> What's your point of view on that style of fighting, Wesson? The uh, backstabbing? Are you more of a, f- a front fighter or... <laughs> Are you a catcher or a pitcher? <laughs> I consider myself somewhat of a power bottom, if you will. <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> A powder bottom. I was always taught. <laughs> God damn, nobody wants to be a fucking powder bottom. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure someone. <laughs> it doesn't sound that unpleasant. Uh, as long as it's not Johnson and Johnson's, right? The asbestos. Oh, I'm doing yeah. as best I can. We're getting, we're getting, <laughs> uh, maybe we should. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't add champagne. <laughs> We apologize, folks. Back in the barracks, we used to have a phrase, <laughs> get her done, some would say. <laughs> Any way you can. So I do take a fa- It's not necessarily a backstab. I do believe that goes Hawkins back all the way to second edition and first edition. It is now a sneak attack. So it is more, you know, taking an enemy off guard. Whatever you need to tell yourself. <sighs> Quincy, you're starting to sound like Orvex, too. I would never... Uh, uh, Copernicus, I thought you were a good friend of mine. Uh, what is this? No, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing of consequence. Uh, what say you, Mr. Zavril Don Tracker? How do you feel about my method of combat? I mean, look at me. I am an aging man. I can't get any women. So might as well stab someone in the spleen. <laughs> so I may as well <laughs> take advantage of uh, the exploits that I that arise on the battlefield. I prefer to look my opponent in the eyes. Says the ranger. Oh, right then. Huh. A real hero. Let us hope that you don't you- encounter any assassin vine then. Try looking them in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, the Venia Sicarius. Oh, you've heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> Cappy pulls the old tendril out of his knapsack. I thought you, uh... Yeah, I did. It's flavor. Uh, <laughs> 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 I left a little tiny piece as a keepsake. So are we going to set up a watch? Or are we just going to... You're uh, able to take um, first watch, uh, seeing how she gets I'm rested I'm not going easier. first watch this time. <laughs> okay, Aramea <laughs> will take first yeah, watch then. Yeah, she, um, because... Quincy will take second. She's an elf, she'll... She's rested. Uh, no. She's wested. <laughs> I'm well wested. I did that too Ooh. earlier, for some reason, but <laughs> last time, Quincy, I know you didn't fall asleep, but bad, I'll take second watch. Just get, get yourself some rest this time. Okay. I think that's a I, great I ins- idea, Copernicus. I insist. <laughs> I'll do whatever Copernicus suggests. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> I've never in my life had somebody like that, and I've always wanted <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Orvex. I believe Copernicus shall be the new leader of the group. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All in favor. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm about to fucking chromatic orb. <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's about try to chromatic up, orb. I'll tighten it up a little bit. Come on now. <laughs> all right, bring it in. Okay. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Too much fun, people. This is a serious business. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you get your rests. <laughs> chromatic orbex. <laughs> so you get your watch all set up and designated. Now, Wesson, you're feeling the day. It was a long one. I mean, they f- it's a miracle by Timora's will that you had been found within that shrine's maze, pinned to a wall. 
Yeah, even prior to the <clears throat> the last encounter with those demonic monkeys, Wesson was really feeling the effects of his illness, coughing up blood, uh, very disoriented, uh, vision a little blurry, and certainly that encounter didn't help. He was struck uh, for some significant damage. Hopefully this long rest will um, bring him back a little bit. But yeah, he's he's not doing so well. Yeah, I I can imagine with the illness and all. Irma, you taking this long rest, it's kind of been on the back of your mind, but you're almost expecting a vision of sorts as you're leaning against the wall, but none come. Given that no visions come, Irma actually finds that her free mind is a bit more terrifying than the visions. She starts to think about how she's changing, um, how she's mistrusting of comrades, how easily battle is coming to her, and how unforgiving she has become, and how some of her high elf attributes have come to the surface and she's reflecting on those and um, trying to find herself again as she meditates through the night. Man, throughout all that, you find you mindlessly are fidgeting with that bloodied bandage in your belt pouch. Quincy, you've got a lot going on. There's been a little bit of a back and forth, a little bit of tug of war little bit of an emotional roller coaster with the witch and all you know with the knee with there seems to be a lot of questions but not a whole lot of answers uh, for the most part with your brother and your father everything you've you've kind of always had a little bit anyway a little bit of a fixed future if I can call it that you at least as far as I can tell sure. anyway you've you've been pretty sure of where you're heading uh, but in light of this information and these questions what kind of toll is that taken on the young Quincy it is both um, with this uh, vision of an obelisk looming in his future and the words from the hag he feels both drawn to and terrified to discover the truth and what it is that's that's been pulling at him uh, he knows that the the map that was given to him by master tris is tied into this he knows that something terrible waits at the obelisk and he kind of feels responsible for maybe making sure that either whatever's there is is um, sealed up or neutralized but he's afraid he's afraid of what he's gonna find there mm -hmm. so there's it is like a tug of war basically he wants this he wants to run away and he, he's pulled toward it but at the same time he wants to just run away from it sure absolutely uh copernicus sybil hasn't been coming around nearly as much she recently made a bit of a, an appearance uh dropped some information but with your wife, with this death curse, with everything that's going on around you, being so close, what's going on in, in the mind of Copernicus at this point? It's not good. It's where it stands. He's very unsure about where things are going. The Red Wizards, Valindra, the death curse. His own path, the Krugen Sphere. It's all very much up in the air. A lot of things are being juggled around him, and he doesn't like that. He's looking for one clear path. There's just so many options and so many ways it could split. So he does what he always does. He puts his head down, and he moves forward. That's where Copernicus is at. Mr. Zaveril Dawn Tracker, it's been a little while. Your kid, your wife, Everything with the, with your book, the deal with the three seas shipping and freight, has it all panned out to what you were expecting? 
and the this the this task of the death curse and solving it was this something that Zavril saw happening from his moment getting off the boat in Chult, or was it something that you picked up along the way? Is solving the death curse more prevalent now than before, and is it more prevalent than earning the money from this book so you can restore your child to to full health and bring your family a- out of poverty um you know i i don't think zavril was quite expecting chult to be as a a dangerous of a place as, a, as it actually is uh, you know these jungles are a lot more vicious than i was initially expecting being able to always take care of myself and those around me and now i feel kind of little in this place Um, there's a lot more going on than i was initially expecting just kind of all the intricacies of the uh the actual everybody that's in play here on this island i did kind of uh I kind of feel very strongly about actually taking care of the death curse and getting it resolved now that that is really high on my list. I I think the biggest thing is, is Zavril's kind of withdrawn now because he's very, he doesn't really think he can take care and protect as many people as he initially did. You know, be it his friends here, be it his family back on the uh, mainland, so... That's right. Yeah. And I imagine your brief captivity with the Uwanti has only instilled yep. more doubt in him. That it did. And added to the, yeah, to your concern about the, the players on the field now. Uh, it's a little yep. bit more political than you initially expected. We were just coming here to, you know, make a name for the three C's shipping and freight. And look what we got ourselves into. Right, the death curse was kind of a joke to begin with, and then it all became very real. At the very least, I mean, out they, of our reach. They were s- yes. supposed to send people way more qualified than us. <laughs> uh, we, were, yeah. we were just supposed to survey the land, get some <laughs> maps together. <laughs> yeah, your thoughts t- at that, your thoughts take you to headquarters, to Daniel Devitas. I miss Devitas. <laughs> and I haven't to, thought of him in so long. And to Petrie, you find yourself uh, fanning yourself off with one of the fans that he had given you your first day in Chult as you apply your insect repellent. How complicated things got in such a short period of time. We were working for Devitas and felt good about it, and then all of a sudden we're at a moral crossroads dealing with Red Wizards and Valindra. <laughs> I do believe... We were at a moral crossroads when we started working for <laughs> Devitas. <laughs> well, <laughs> although, although a more innocent. Making us fight a tamed animal, that was kind of heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. The last we saw of Devitas, he sent us off with a hundred gold. And what's her name? The little cleric girl. Neat. Neat. God, I miss Neat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Quincy. <laughs> I just made a look. <laughs> huh? Yeah, at that, Zero, you notice Quincy reacts to that. <laughs> you didn't notice when Anit was around, Zero would wake up an hour earlier than Zero the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> then Zim would be. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, then Zim would be. Your thoughts take you to Zim would be and where he might be? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. Last <laughs> time the rest of us saw Zimwabi, was it when he went looking for Mr. Don Tracker? That's mm. right. And the last you, last information you have on him was from Riga, who had told us he was, what, uh, scouting the Uwanti? Well, that he had business with the Uwanti that he would take care of. Mm. So, we've come a long way, boys and girl. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to address that. or <laughs> 2018, of course. <laughs> I, by the time this airs, it'll be 2019. Oh, shit. And she is dressed like Freddy Krueger still. Yeah. She is. So. Fair enough. So, Anyways. You guys. It's a very comfortable sweater. 
What about the claws? Are they comfortable too? No. The razors at the ends of your fingers? <laughs> Why are you wearing like cooked ham on your face too? I just don't get it. I was dressed like a crispy elf for work. I just never took it all off. They had D and D in Nightmare on Elm Street three. Did they now? They did. They did. Dream Warriors. Yeah. Yep. It's a great one. That's my favorite one. Oh Dockin shit! Yeah. The theme song. <laughs> I have to revisit that. Yeah, yeah. Dream Warriors. You bro. guys, look well, it up. I am cooler than I even <laughs> knew. Should Dream Warriors be a class in D and D? Ooh, Ooh you could be a Dream Warrior subclass. Damn, Ar- archetype. That is an idea. I archetype like of the warrior archetype. Only if I can look like Johnny Depp. Save it for a BTS. A lot of this BTS material. Nah, dude, this is our yearly. This is our this annual. Is a, yeah, we're a little looser, I guess. A half fucking shit faced. And the, yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> champagne <laughs> didn't help at the, the beginning. The champagna. We didn't even open <laughs> yeah, the second it's bottle. so weird. I was thinking of that. Champagna. Champagne, yeah. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> I also wanted to mispronounce that word. <laughs> Well, you're all thinking, you're all lost in thought. Have a little D&D with your champagne, guys. <laughs> you're all lost in thought of what we just went over. And at some point, one by one, the night moves on. The day begins. How many hit dice till I get back? Half. Half of your total. Nice. Now... That's how you do it. You wake up to a bit of commotion going on in the distance. Now, up until this point, the distance, whenever I would say that, was (laughs) way the fuck out in the distance. uh, Outside of the crater that is Omu. If you look on the map, you see all that jungle around the crater there. That's usually where you hear like the occasional something getting torn up or trees a breaking, a roar. You know, the jungle's alive. You hear commotion right now in the distance, but not that far out into the distance. At most, maybe on top of the ledge, you know, up above. At most. But it could very well be within the parameter of the crater of Omu. Uh, and this commotion sounds like a beast of sorts or several. You hear roars, growls, gnashing. It sounds like a fight is ensuing, not all too far away. What direction? North, south, east, or west? North. Um, all right. Come on, uh, Cappy. Let's go put bets on this. <laughs> uh, Irme will try to find the nearest, highest ground to try to get a better view of what's going on. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a, a dex, uh, an athletics, yeah, athletics check to climb up. Cappy's flipping a gold piece in his hand. <laughs> Orvex is lock and loading his crossbow. Riga is now uh, beginning to collect himself to his feet. And bring his greatsword up. So, the, so this is of concern to us. It's not just noise in the jungle. Yeah, this is this is uh, more. Uh, this is within your comfort zone. Mm. Irme, fifteen. Uh, fifteen on your ac- on your athletics check. Yep. You managed to slip up through uh, a, a fairly large crack in the ceiling, and you make it to the top of the building that you rested in. And with that, a child comes around the stairs. <laughs> it's just toddlers. <laughs> it's just toddlers. <laughs> 1d12 psychic damage. <laughs> yeah. For the rest of your and life. three levels of exhaustion. <laughs> yeah. The only way to heal is to cry in the shower. Welcome to hell. <laughs> Every time you hit them, you take double damage. <laughs> yeah. Double psychic damage. Back on yourself. <laughs> All right, so you get up to the top of the building and you look out. Right as you get up, you look to the north and you see a massive dinosaur. Ah, oh, fuck. In its maw, it's got like a stegosaurus all bloodied. 
I it love wh- stegosaurus. It's sad. And it whips its head and throws the stegosaurus, and it lands but like 30 feet away from you in front of the building. And this beast begins stomping back towards it. And the stegosaurus is still alive. It's like trying to get to its feet. You know, one of its legs isn't working. It's trying to get up to its feet. And this thing comes stomping down through. (laughs) What? I claim the horn. I'll cast invisibility on the stegosaurus. This thing. (laughs) It's a tyrannosaurus. It looks like a tyrannosaurus rex with a rhino horn and a hairy ass back. A mullet. (laughs) Mullet. Oh, no. This thing has a spine of feathers. Ah, they're feathers. Okay. And it is stomping down through. Now, to your knowledge, it has not noticed you. It seems to be fixed on the Stegosaurus as of right now. Irame is going to slip back down as quietly as she can through the crack in the roof that she came up from. Did the invisibility spell work? Did you cast it on the Stegosaurus? I tried. No. I Let mean, it eat you don't even the know Stegosaurus. Uh, well, <laughs> she just said she loved Stegosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> they are my favorite dinosaur. You didn't love them that much. No, yeah, no. Eat it. <clears throat> I just, out of uh, curiosity, I just want to know what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know it's there? Probably. Never mind. Is. I can't do it. It's touch. Uh, oh. Sorry to waste you guys' time. I thought I it was mean, you could feet. go up there and touch it. Ain't no thing. That was a dumb fucking idea. So I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Because <laughs> well, it's gonna smell us. So Irame comes back down as quietly as possible and tells her comrades about the dinosaur and to be quiet. She comes down at this point, looking out the crack of the wall. You see a ste- bloodied Stegosaurus trying to get to its feet. This Whoa, what the just, fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, this thing was just a groan. <laughs> the steg- stegosaurus is pretty big. Uh, uh, right, that thing's going to land 30 feet in front of the building. And then you feel the stomping of something even bigger coming closer to you. Bigger than that? No, no, no. Bigger than the stegosaurus. Uh, you guys okay. didn't see this yet. Only Irame saw the uh, Tyrannosaurus. You guys looking out the crack in the wall were able to see that stegosaurus that caught your attention. You whipped your heads to see this thing. They can only see you if you move. <laughs> <laughs> Stay perfectly still. I get to be Jeff Goldblum in this scenario. I want everyone to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you. No, it's not all you. Uh, I would like to be Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Roll off. <laughs> I want to be the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I get to be? The fucking old guy that started up the park? <laughs> gets his ass wrecked? Or vaccine. No, you're the Nerman. guy who gets eaten on the toilet. <laughs> Let's move on. The fucking lawyer guy? Yeah, the lawyer. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of slid him to you under the table and you totally... Yeah, I didn't take right that. Back. No. You could be the guy that's trying to steal the dino DNA. Oh. Nobody wants to be him. That's Newman. Oh, the betrayer. Newman. That's Newman. Yeah. Newman. Newman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his desk was a mess all the time and shit. Hold Fuck on that. to your butts. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. All right. This thing entered your vicinity. What do you do? Uh, stealth. Mm. All right. Give me some stealth checks. And I'll, yeah, tell him the whole crew stealth down. Ooh, 21 for Quincy. Quincy's looking good. Eight for Copernicus. Not good for Copernicus. 15 for Wesson. 15 for Wesson. 16 for Irame. Is it too late to give? I think it's Nine a group. For, is it a group oh, it's a group. Stealth or not? It's a group stealth. Okay. Yeah. Zaver, what do you got? Nine. Oh. Right. Are we half? Everyone what? needs to quiet down. Shh. <laughs> You're the one making noise, Copernicus. <laughs> I'll give you two gold pieces to run out there and touch that stegosaurus. <laughs> All right. As of you're right out of 15. I don't know if you caught that. Sorry. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. As of right now, it comes in, and now you can see it enter the, the fray. This thing stomps up 
grabs a hold of that stegosaurus and then just <laughs> done stegosaurus lets out one last cry of pain and then it just hangs limp in its mouth Irma is being she's got her she's almost meditating she is so trying to stay poised now you see it standing there with it in its mouth and it like <laughs> looks around and it turns around and starts to slowly make its way towards that amphitheater with the stegosaurus in its mouth it gets maybe about 40 feet out and it stops do you think we could take it? No, shut up. Do you happen to have any barrel bombs on you? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a back exit to this building? Now, uh, it's about 40 feet out now, and... It's an unnecessary risk, Copernicus. Give me one more stealth check. <laughs> Natty 19. Ooh. Natty 19 for Quincy. Ooh. Fucking A, 22. Six. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> By the way, it's 23 with my natty 19, so it still got higher than Copernicus. <laughs> I just rolled a natty one. <gasps> oh. That nice. offsets the 19. You're amazing. Oh. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing is going to um, use... A luck point to re-roll her ability check. Ooh, using the luck point. And that is a 18. Okay, that's better. Would you get that buckle fixed already? <laughs> it's gonna get us killed one of these days. <laughs> yeah, it uh, picks up the stegosaurus again. And after sniffing around for a bit, looking around, and it moves on towards the amphitheater and you notice where it's going the amphitheater you notice uh, a layer of bone looks like some old backpacks what so we can make <laughs> <laughs> the most glorious pole arm out of that horn Zavril you haven't seen anything like this thing I know I was admiring the feathers yeah as a matter of fact it brings you back to some graffiti on the wall when you first entered Omu. Ah, not the vulture, but... <laughs> <laughs> All hail the king of feathers. Mm. Is so, this something that we should concern ourselves with? No. I tend to think we should continue on our path. If you're content with this thing stomping around being the king of the city... I, I am kind of curious if, you know... <laughs> I think we could take it. I think this is a horrible idea. You know, Just once, think of the fame we could get for bringing something down like that. I completely agree with Zavril. You see Briga starting to get a little excited at the talk of taking it. He brings up his greatsword. He's like, there's no time like the present, my friends. It could be a feather in the cap for the three seas shipping and freight. Exactly. This thing is known as the king of feathers around Omu. Just think of the fame it would bring us. <laughs> As I'm salivating at the mouth. Yes. We I'll... were told by Devitas that reputation does mean everything. Not if you're dead. It's just more reputation for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> I mean, honestly, can we, looking at it, do we feel like we could take it con. or or would it be a inst- fool's errand death? right are we doing a, a uh, throw I a rock Zavril, at it. doesn't Zavril have <laughs> that? I thought Zavril had the ability do you not out of character no I can't tell if there's a way if we can beat a mob or not uh, I think it means like it's <laughs> whether or not in, you can con it in character um, you know we should be able to know our own strengths. 
I think uh, Copernicus was talking about Zabriel's ability to uh, figure out what it's capable of. Uh, strengths, weaknesses, abilities. Do you have something like that? Exactly. I mean, yes, I can tell you what its weaknesses are. Do it. What, Let's what, see it. What's the range on that? If we're going to go at it, we go at it smart. Whatever I can see within 60 feet of me. Yeah, I'll say it's it's still within 60 feet. It only got about 40 feet out for your second... Uh, was it 40 or 60 for your second cell check that I made? 40. Yeah, I thought so. All right, let's do it. What weaknesses does this thing have? What vulnerabilities? <laughs> uh, it doesn't have any vulnerabilities. That's great. <laughs> hey, I haven't told you yet. <laughs> yeah, he's got a point. <laughs> I'm wondering if we could fashion some sort of trap for this right. beast. I do have a Are spell there any that could snare it, perhaps. Resistances. I have a pole arm we could perhaps set up. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old uh, Braveheart. Yeah, not, yeah. It's not a grizzly bear, okay? Hold. <laughs> 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 what? So, what else do you get from that ability, Zaves? Uh, vulnerabilities, resistances, damage, immunities. If it's hidden from divination magic then i don't sense anything it's not hidden you don't you don't learn any traits nope oh okay so you don't pick up any you don't pick up any uh vulnerabilities or immunities all right or resistances or resistances i could slow the creature as a great skill to have but this may not be our fight finally some sense you were all gung ho about it a minute ago. <laughs> Three gold, Cappy. Three gold. <laughs> like I said, this may not be our fight. <laughs> if I slow the creature, then I cannot fly, essentially, to take shelter from it. If I get the killing blow, I want 50 gold. 50 gold? <laughs> Let me see how much I have in my purse. That is lunch money, Copernicus, for such and a beast. that is the offer I'd give back to you, Hunter. <laughs> Who gets the horn? Well, we should decide whether or not we want to take this thing down. I think we are discussing that right now. We have no business with this creature. We can move on. Uh, if I may, uh, I believe I would agree with both parties in the matter. While it would be wise to stay away from that infernal beast... Uh, the mere thought of fighting it uh, downright frightens me. However, uh, I would not want it coming up on us if we were perhaps engaged in something else. <laughs> he makes a good point. Uh, All right, so it's settled then. Ah! <laughs> ah! I don't know. Okay. This is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, this is a fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it will gain us quite a little bit of fame, I think. Irme. Orvex had a good point. What if it came up on our tail? We're in the middle of dealing with red wizards. We haven't had to deal with it so far, and the last shrine we were at was quite close to its home. If we are fortunate enough to face off with the red wizards uh, in one of the shrines, and we let it eat the red wizards. Oh, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. However, if uh, perhaps there was something else that we encounter in the city streets, uh, we have gotten lucky so far. That is true. If we were to skirmish in the streets, it would attract the noise, would attract this beast. But I am game either way. Uh, like I said, uh, the thought of fighting that is quite frightful. Quincy, don't you want to check out that magnificent building that it is claiming? I was, I was actually um, on your side, Mr. Don Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a case for perhaps engaging with the creature. If we are to take on this beast, we must be tactical. Mm. We must come up with a plan and use our surroundings to defeat this monster. I can slow the beast, but I will stay out of range of it. Yeah, even even discussing this, Wes, and you're feeling your left leg starts to go numb a little bit. What are the um? What are our surroundings? Broken buildings, 
chewed up cobblestone streets, uh, overgrown with weeds and vines. Cappy will put his arm around Quincy and Irame and say, If the gladiator and the hunter want to go after this beast, then I say we do it. I will not die here, Copernicus. If this goes south, I will flee. I'll I'll be the first to flee with you. (laughs) You know that, Irame. Let's have us a bit of sport. I am with the team, whatever the team decides. We start with a snare, then. Okay, I like it. No, Wes, and you know that in your current condition, if fleeing was an option, you may not make it. Wes and leans back, sharpens the tip of his glaive, embraces himself for what he knows could be his final encounter, reflecting within and thinking about the possible outcome of um, dying during the death curse. But he has confidence in his party. He has faith in his friends. He's fought a number of battles beside them already. And if they feel confident, he's willing to risk his life. Now you guys look over. You see Wesson leaning against the wall. You see him rubbing his upper thigh of his left leg a bit as he's contemplating this in his head. Um, Can I do a medicine check to see if there's anything I could do to just at least relieve his pain? Yeah, give me a a medicine check. 14. Uh, Taking a look at it. There's not much you can do to help. Whatever's ailing him seems deep-rooted. I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe if you had proper ingredients, you might be able to brew him up a tea or something that might ease the pain a little bit, but... You know, Quincy, by that medicine check, that if 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 it came to running, you're not sure Wesson could make it very far. I'm sorry, Wesson, but in the field here, without proper supplies, there's not nothing I could do about your leg. No apologies are necessary, young Quincy. A mentor of mine once told me, if you make friends with pain, you'll never be alone. <laughs> so what is the plan? Uh, quickly before it's gone, uh, Zavril will grab his attention. Irame will slow it, and the rest of us will kill it. <laughs> we don't need to grab its attention for me to slow it, and I can slow it from a healthy distance. <laughs> the plan is we come out victorious. <laughs> yes. The plan is ludicrous and unnecessary. So you guys got this beast. Uh, there's been a little bit of back and forth. I'm a little unclear of what you guys. What do you? So what's What's uh? What's what are you guys thinking? You're gonna um, fight it, or are you gonna? Let it... Can I cast slow on it before initiative even starts from 120 feet? 120 feet, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Cappy wants his shadow blade and his pack weapon in his hands before he stands up and yells out to the King of Feathers. I mean, we could all put on our debuffs beforehand. I, I mean, it doesn't really damage it or anything until she goes through and casts slow. Right. You mean put your buffs up? Yeah. So Irame is going to... uh, Or debuffs on it. Yeah. So Irame, we move out. Yep. 120 feet from it because that's the max I can be. Okay. And um, you see Irame kind of motion towards Wesson to stay with her. And she looks towards the beast, and you see her moving her hands in kind of a counterclockwise motion. And for the first time, she attempts to cast slow on the Feathered King. He needs to pass a wisdom saving throw. And we need to roll on the wild mage chart. That's right. (laughs) So I like everything about this. Everything that is about to happen, <laughs> I like all of it. <laughs> all right, Irame, slow is going out. Wisdom saving throw coming in. Hot. With. Do it. What's the well, deal? Do it. With slow a Ben on. Luck against his saving throw. 
I don't want to take any chances because this is stupid. You guys are dumb. <laughs> hey, you're the one doing the first action against it. Okay, are you guys ready for this? Yeah. All right. So Irme is going to cast slow, and simultaneously she will use her Ben luck. Sure. All right. So on the Feathered King's wisdom saving throw, she'll roll a d4 as a penalty to his check. And it's only a fucking one. It's all right. Don't be don't beat yourself up over it. All that <laughs> for a fucking one. one. Well, it's a d4, pyramid. one out of One's four. One's a one. It's better than it nothing. It speeds it yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes into rage mode. <laughs> So the way this works, right, because it's surprised, you guys pass your cell check, she attacked, it's going to be surprised for the first round. Okay. So you're uh, uh, 120 feet away. Did, yep. did you yep. fail the wizard? Wait, well, you're you're within, it was only 60 feet away from you. I so know. unless you moved. I moved. You, so I you said moved as back. far, ba- I, oh. so as these far guys back are, as I can. Yeah, so these guys, you guys are all still 60 feet from it. And so you don't really, you see your doing I'm, some things i also motion for wesson i don't know if he chose to fall back with me or not wesson acknowledges uh Aramay's <clears throat> hand gestures kind, kindly <laughs> kindly brushes them off gives Returns her a nod a hand and, gesture and, of his own. and moves forward <laughs> yeah um, so towards see, the battle seeing that going on i kindly push zavril forward <laughs> As she goes backwards. So so Zavril's at least 50 feet away. <laughs> As must are 60. <laughs> Is my plan. So Irame, you notice, you're watching it keenly, and it definitely stops in its tracks. It feels something, but then it just shakes. Fuck. Roll a wild surge. Two. Oh, yeah. Close. Uh. (laughs) And it would appear you feel like your spell would have landed. We'll see you next time. Is this a unique must? Uh, Is this a name? Probably. Yes, this is a name. This is dumb. You guys are dumb. That was a net. That's funny. If I fucking die, okay? Keeping that. I'm taking all the dice back.